I use two apps to organize my home life, my work life, my research, my health habits, and everything in between. But I have changed the amount of apps I've used so many different times that there is one piece of framework, one tip, one hack that I use consistently irrespective of the piece of software that I use. And that is the framework of it being active, waiting, or passive. It sounds simple, but how does that actually work? In Morgan, my task and calendar app of choice, I have all of my active tasks and events inside of my day. Then any task that I want to do, but I'm not sure when, goes in the task panel, which is my waiting tab. Once I've decided when I want to do it, I can move it onto the calendar, and now it's gone from waiting to active. I can then show all of my completed tasks, which are the passive archived tasks and events that I've already completed. Now, because this is my calendar app, there's also time blocking. So main video isn't very specific mm. and write article isn't specific. Mm. And this is where active waiting and passive goes into my notes. I have two different types of notes. I have source notes and working notes. The source notes that are active are inside of my file explorer showing here. So this is an active source note. And it's active because I need to go through this note and work out where it relates to other working notes. Once the note is linked, it will then be moved into one of these folders and then it becomes passive. And the same system is true for my daily notes. So this is today's note and this is active because if there's anything that I need to note down, it goes in this note. If there are points still in this note, then I won't move it to the month folder until I've processed them and then the note becomes passive. My main working notes have stages they go through, which is waiting, written and writing. Waiting notes have lots of points in them, highlightable points in them, but I still need to distill all of these points into something that I can use. Writing notes are notes where I'm distilling all of those points into outlines using headings and then into paragraphs and sections that are summarizing certain concepts, topics and points. Written notes are notes where I've distilled down all of the information. I've actually started expressing them into certain sections and blocks that I can reference in other pages. So you can see here, top down processing has been expressed in this section, in this block that I can then use in other pages. But a working note only becomes active when I want to actively work on it using the active tag. So I could have a waiting active note, a writing active note, or a written active note, or if they're not active, then it means they're passive. If a note has a to do tag, it means it's waiting on because there is something that I need to do. There is some action I need to take, but it's not necessarily always active. In this course note example, you can see I'm writing this note because I'm actively taking the cohort 14 building a second brain course. There are things I need to do in this section. So if I go down to that part of the outline, this is what I need to do. And this note is active because I'm going to this note daily and working in this note. However, in this example, this note is written. So I've distilled and expressed all of the points, but there are still things in the to do section because I want to process and go through this note again from the computational cognitive science chapter onwards. And a new point was added from a video that I watched, which was about Meg. So it's a to do action because there's something new to the page, but it's not active because it's waiting on. And because I use Obsidian, I can go to my home workspace and see the active pages straight away. I can see the waiting on pages by clicking on to do. And if I want to be more specific about what waiting pages I'm looking for, I can then go to the advanced searches in the start panel. When combining these things together to help me manage my goals and projects, each of these task lists I class as areas of my life and they have associated goals, outcome goals and value based goals. Health related goals have a blue tick, so morning water, making sure I'm hydrated, cleaning my teeth, eating lunch, eating dinner, spending time with the family, they are all health related goals. Medication is still health related, but because there is so much medication I need to take, I like to be able to see a color difference, which is why medication and health are both in my habits calendar. So you can see habits Google Calendar, habits Google Calendar, but I like to see the color differences when I'm going through my day so I can work out where my energy is being spent. The habits that are actions that are things I want to do but don't necessarily have a goal specifically related to them go into the actions task list and they are the grey ticks. So making sure I'm checking my Twitter bookmarks, which is my read later, my podcast, my episode list for listen later, my notes processing and other things related like checking my email and making sure the dog's taken her meds. And the creation task list is essentially my work task list and the, the pinky red colour allows me to see how much time I'm spending towards work, even though all of this is still in my habits calendar, which is identified by the green line. 
then I have my reading task list, which is essentially my learning, what I want to learn about, where I'm reading, where I'm writing, distilling, expressing, and all of the other research topics I want to explore at some point and then put on my calendar. And then the miscellaneous tasks go into my inbox. And I avoid doing too much by looking at this active page to see what I'm actively working on. You can see I'm taking the course, I'm reading through this thesis, which is related to this misconceptions page. So this is where I'm writing up all of the notes from here. I have the membership that I'm working on. I have YouTube channel that I'm working on. And then I'm looking for defining productivity, what it means to me. That's another side project I'm working on. But as long as this doesn't get filled up, I know I'm expending enough energy in the right places. And then when I'm planning, I can also see what I want to do in the future because of the waiting tag, the to do tag. And a lot of these relate to those research interests in my calendar. And because of these advanced searches, I can go to to do and writing and go, OK, I'm actually going to focus on these certain things in the coming weeks which again helps that decision making process avoiding decision fatigue. The files on my computer are very similar. You can see I have lots of space currently, but the space gets filled up as I start working on projects. Then when I complete the projects, I delete a lot of the information and only store the relevant pieces that I need. My main external hard drive is where I store all of my notes. You can see there is my Obsidian note collection. These are the applications I have on my PC, which is just Affinity and Audacity. My old university essays that haven't been converted into Markdown notes yet my Zotero backup folder for all the PDF files that are stored in Zotero. This is the active OBS recording that I'm currently making to record this, and once this is done, it will then get moved into the work folder, which has all of my active files in for when I'm working on that specific project. Photos, images, and icons. The archive folder is my waiting folder because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with these documents yet. Future video, course videos, monthly research records, the video I'm working on, future video, and then finance documents that I update weekly. If you're interested in learning more about Obsidian or more about my workflow and how I use other tools to help me get things done, then have a look at the link in the description for lifetime access to the module courses and group support from myself and all of the other members.